got a mid to late 80s Marshall JCM 800, uh, 2110, I think it is, split channel reverb, 100 watt. And the ticket says low output. Let's open it up and see what's going on. Right, it's got the original LCR filter caps, date code of 89. The inspection at the other end, I think it says 92. It's maybe a night, I'm not sure of the years of production. I think the inspection says 92. These say 89. Let's check the fuses first. Should be four amp and one amp. Main selector is already set to 120 volts. Output selector is set to eight. That's good. That's the, my main test cab is eight ohms. I use that because most four ohm amps can use it. All eight ohm amps can use it. And most 16 ohm amps can use it. So it's a good compromise. I, I can uh, make it be 16 or 4 in conjunction with the dummy load as necessary. All right, so 4 amps in the main. That's good. The uh, fuses. It's got a 2 amp here, which should be a 1 amp. Um, took me a while to read the first one because... The part of the fuse that, that had the uh, current listing was inside the fuse holder. I prefer to put them in so that uh, the correct value is visible. Put this 2 amp away and get a 1 amp out. It's possible that someone was blowing uh, the HT uh, fuse with the 1 amp and put in a 2 amp and to stop blowing, but that doesn't mean that it's healthy. So here, one amp, I'm putting it so that it's visible. It's easier to check that way. Let me tighten these up. We'll take a look at a few other things. Other than some uh, white rust, which is zinc oxide on the uh, bell, bell covers of the uh, power and output transformer. Everything looks pretty pretty clean. A little bit of stuff, schmutz, on the uh, chassis, but certainly better than many I've seen from this era. The DI output is missing its knob, and the shaft is all bent. I'll ask the owner if he wants that re repaired just because, though I doubt he ever uses it. And the uh, RCA connections to the reverb tank have been taped off. So he's not been using the reverb. I'll call him and see if he cares about that at, at all. Let me get the tube shields off here for the preamp tube sockets. These are really nice quality tube shields that they were using this era. Very heavy metal, real pretty nickel plating. Uh, there was an update to my video software on the phone, and uh, all the settings have changed. I keep finding it harder and harder to get it to be not too bright. And the focus has changed so that what used to be farther away and closer has been reversed. So that's some older, possibly original preamp tubes. We'll take a look at those after we can see if it's safe to power up. Let's flip this over and look inside. All right, on the inside of this thing, the old LCRs have got little bumps starting in the middle. I'm a big believer in changing out filter caps on anything over 20 years, and this is certainly over 20 years. Uh, but I don't know that that's necessarily the cause of, of low volume. It can be. And there's some, definitely some corrosion on these ground connections. Let's see what the uh, screen grid and grid stoppers measure. Make sure that all the output tubes are likely to be working. 
There are a lot of reasons an app can lose volume, some of which are more catastrophic than others. So 2K, it's supposed to be a 2.2K. 2 2.14, 2.09, 2.075. I'm sure these are 5% tolerance, so they're all okay-ish. Check the grid stoppers for 5.68. Sorry about the painted solder joints on the original. It's be hard to get a read sometimes. 5.6. Five point five five. Five point five five. So the output tubes should all be working. Let's take a look at the preamp stuff. Pretty typical spaghetti wiring for this period. This cap often needs to be changed. It's not visibly leaking. And I don't, I don't see anything yucky coming out of the bias cap, so those also need to be changed just for preventative maintenance. Put it this way, the guy uh, keeps this amp in a road case, a big, heavy road case, so he obviously cares about the amp. Um, I know that all those ground chassis connections that are corroded, I need to clean. And uh, I'd like to do a full recap, just changing all the electrolytics. This uh, CA3046 chip, which is what does the channel changing in these amps, can get problematic and uh, can mute things you don't want muted and such. So I'm going to uh, power this up on the current limiter and see what we hear. Hear what we hear, I suppose, is a better, better verb. All right, I'm powering it on in standby. And I'm watching the current limiter. All that does that, I'm going to get a guitar. I have a signal generator. It doesn't make for very pleasant videos. And unless I'm doing something very specific, I find a guitar is faster, tells me what I need to know. I came to it for, as a musician who had to learn to be a tech rather than an electronics guy who uh, developed an interest in guitar. So all right, so a little crackle in the output. We give the tubes a good wiggle. Nothing weird on the power tubes going through the preamps. That's V3 there. Maybe nothing more than a bad V3, though I'd still like to recap this and clean it all up. for the master about two o'clock. Yeah, that's not right. Let me put it in the standby. Gonna pull V3 since it's acting so ugly on us. And that is an old GE 12AX7, which are great, great tubes when they work. But just like any tube, it eventually will stop working. Let's see here. I've got a TAD handy. That'll be fine. This uh, put in here and see what happens. And I'm ready to turn the master volume down if necessary. Well, no difference. Still that ugly sound. We may have a bad solder joint there. Let me take a uh, closer look.
That's the plate that is making the ugly sound. May just need to be cleaned. Now, something I did notice though is that I wasn't getting much sound if I tapped on V1. And in most Marshalls, you can, especially with older tubes, you can hear that. So I'm going to take it out as well, temporarily at least. It's really tight in the socket. And it's an, uh, a generic ECC 83, probably 80s or 90s. Put another TID in V1. And let's see if that makes any difference. Not really. Let me uh, get a cable and change channels on us. All right, we've got a little bit more volume. don't have 100 watt volume and uh, something in this amp got a bad connection connection somewhere let me see if we just have a dirty effects loop sometimes that happens I'm going into the return of, of the effects loop here and that's louder than the output of the preamp so I'm turning the master down now. Go back in the front panel. All right, so it could be dirty effects loop. Let me take the put this cable from the sender of the return, but I'm suspicious of uh, a bad solder joint on the bottom of the board, given the multitude of symptoms we're getting. Well, that's not it. So, uh, time to pull the board up. Well, frustratingly, this is the first split channel reverb I've ever had in where I did not see a bunch of broken solder joints. So I'm going to leave the board lifted up for a while because I got some other things to test. And uh, I'm going to start with cleaning some of those tube sockets and refolding the solder joints on those sockets. And then we've got some other tubes to experiment with because we only swapped out two. It could be something else. Well, this amp had three things going on. It had very dirty tube sockets. It had bad tubes in V2 and V3. We hadn't changed out V2 earlier. I was distracted by the noise here. Uh, and crucially, pin one had never really been soldered from the factory. There was solder, a solder blob on this wire, but there was no solder connection to the pin and it was being held in place by the other wires pressed up against it. But uh, it wasn't really soldered to the pin, and that pin had corroded over the years. So I got that all off and cleaned it up, and that's actually soldered now. I can actually go in there very carefully and tug on it. It does not come loose. So the amp has uh, got volume again, 
It's got three original tubes, well, two original tubes and that GE. Uh, the tubes which were bad were also original. They're the ones that Marshall was using in that era that just say ECC83 in, uh, M in red. Um, and they're usually okay unless they turn microphonic, or in this case, uh, horrible. So the amp is sounding much better now that it's making sound. <laughs> But you hear all that static and background noise? Part of that is, uh, sorry about that. Part of that's that noisy tube that's in V1, that old GE. And part of that is old electrolytics and some of those iffy grounds that I mentioned at the beginning of this process. And I would, I would dear, dearly love to recap this, make sure this amp lasts another 30, 40 years. I'll talk to the owner tomorrow. But now that I've done this much troubleshooting, I know what to tell him at least. So...